and today we're going to be talking about solar cells and solar cell soldering and solar cell encapsulation. And one of the first rules is glove up. Make sure these gloves are non-powdered. That is the most important thing when handling with these with gloves. If your gloves are powdered, you are going to end up leaving the talcum powder on the cells themselves, which is going to be worse than the fingerprints you would leave without the gloves. So, solder. This is a lead-based solder. We like lead-based solders because they melt at a lower temperature. You can use lead-free solder. You're going to run the higher risk of damaging your cells. And uh, as long as you use good ventilation and don't chew on it, you should be fine. For ventilation, what we found out works best is actually just one of these little computer fans. And you just set it, blow the fumes away from you, and it works pretty good. The amount of air it puts out is better than the amount that you would normally get from one of those carbon filters that are made to filter and suck, uh, suck the fumes in. And uh, just open the door to your lab. You'll be okay. All right, soldering irons. The Weller irons, and this is important. You want to make sure you have a good iron. Don't do this with a Radio Shack iron, if Radio Shack is still in business when you see this video. Um, the thing about the Metcal iron, it is self-regulating. It does get pretty hot. Um, they're very good irons, very expensive irons. Um, but it's pretty worth it considering how many cells we actually have to solder together. The Weller is not self-regulating. You do set the temperature on it. And uh, some of these also have uh, digital controls. If you don't have a way of regulating your temperature, or if it's not a Metcal that is self-regulating, don't use the iron. Like I said, don't. The, these cells are expensive. If you buy these cells, you're looking at 8 to $15 per cell. Don't go out and buy a $10 soldering iron. You're, you're going to re absolutely regret it. And uh, I want to go back to these connectors really quick. Two types. These are, okay, so you have the bus connectors that is made from going from module to module. And then we have these other connectors, and these are commonly called dog bone connectors. These are from cell to cell. Uh, these are proprietary to sun power, and they are actually, I believe, I was told that they are chemically matched to the back of the uh, sun power cells themselves. I'm not for sure if that's true or not. Uh, these are I believe copper and they've been tinned with solder and uh, you do not need flux to solder these. If you're doing like three bar, two bar cells, which we can talk about in another video, you will need to flux those. However, these are so well matched to the back of sun power cells that you don't need to flux these. As a matter of fact, I recommend you don't flux these because you can get bleed over from the back of the cell and that will actually go onto the front of the cell and damage the cell. And let's go ahead and talk about the cell really quick. This is a sun power cell. If you notice, there's absolutely no traces on the front. All of the traces for a sun power cell are on the back of the cell. You have pads on the back where they connect, where the dog bone connectors will connect and make contact. And make sure on this one it's marked. So the positive side is marked, the negative side is generally not. It's fine. One side positive, you know the other side's negative. Make sure you pay attention to this. You're going to connect all of these in series. Negative, positive. Alright? If not in series, then it will short out and you will have a bad series of cells. It will be worthless, especially if you've encapsulated it. And you want to make sure when you solder to the pads on the back of these cells that you don't actually contact the traces on the back of the cell. If you do, you've just shorted out the cell. And that, it becomes worthless. At that point, the cell is then worthless. And you need to remove it from the string. By using 3D spacers, we, gr uh, we can separate our cells in a way that allows us to easily keep it spaced and make it easier to solder together. And these are just 3D printed 
and uh, we've just used super glue to literally glue them out to the proper spacing. And this makes sure that you maintain proper spacing. Because of the pre-made dog bone connectors, you need to have these at the right spacing between cells. Okay. Now, this also maintains a uniform uh, module from cell to cell when you put this on. The, so when you put this on your car, it, everything lines up and it makes this go much, much quicker. When actually applying solder to the dog bone, usually having a small little puddle on there works out, but when actually working with these types, it mainly just takes a lot of practice. And anytime you have a little solder on the tip of your iron, the liquid will help to conduct the heat better than just a dry iron. Soldering with a dry iron is just, it, it's a bad practice. Uh, you can yeah. use solder paste on the back of these cells in the place of using oh, wet solder and so. tinning them like Tristan's doing right now. We've just done this method and it's worked well for us. We've experimented a little bit with solder paste, but this is just what we're more accustomed to. We're only going to make a 2x2 two two cell just to show off how the uh, dog bones and the uh, bus bars work with these. I wouldn't suggest putting your bare finger on these bus bars, but I've done it enough to where I don't really burn myself as often. Getting dental tools to hold these things down is really useful. I used it a lot during the summer when making the uh, Nova array. And Tristan's also being careful not to leave any sharp bumps or any substantial bumps on the back of these with his solder joints as well. These will create pressure points on the cell during the encapsulation process and can damage the cell. Number one thing with these cells, with any type of cells, is handling. You gotta treat these things very carefully from the moment you pick them up, from the moment you put them down, the moment you encapsulate them, to the moment you glue them on to whatever you're trying to put them on. And it's best to handle them only from the edges, even though you're wearing gloves, and you can see why this one was a reject. Even though you're wearing gloves, you don't really want to contact the surface. And the surface of a sun power cell, it may look flat. It's not flat. And uh, on a microscopic scale, there are actually millions and millions of pyramids on the surface of this cell, and that is to help capture as much light as you possibly can. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Always double check because really we don't want any shorts whatsoever. I've made a mistake a couple of times in the middle of the night working on these and uh, it's the biggest pain realizing that once you've done a string and you realize you made a mistake somewhere and the wiring. The practice makes perfect. And how many of these did you solder for the last array, almost single-handedly? Uh, there was 396 cells in total. So, 396 cells. Usually, most of them were like five in series. And then we just put them together with the uh, bus bars. Thank you. That one's got a hill on it. There we go, that's a bit better. It just takes practice. The first time you try doing this on your own, you're probably going to get hills, or you might cause a short. You might put too much solder in one place but that's fine. Most of the time when you're practicing you'll be using bad cells like these. Don't start with your good cells and think you're gonna go straight to work building an array. This may look easy. Yeah, it's we not. haven't broke anything. Uh, you're going to snap cells. You're going to short cells. You're going to screw up. So pick out your worst cells and just get started but pretend that those were cells are going on your array. And Tristan is getting them spaced out with some of our bare spacers that aren't printed on. And then using Kapton to hold them in place. The way these were originally made, 
they were supposed to go on outside of it so that way they wouldn't cause any shortages but because we wanted to save space we have to do it on the inside of the cell but by doing that we would short out the uh, cells so our solution was take the pieces of paper that came with the solar cells cut the pieces up so that way it goes along the inside of the cell and yeah. prevent shorting congratulations And we just tape it on using Kapton. And you want to make sure that you do leave the pads exposed. Because that's what you're soldering to. Ex leave the pads exposed and only the pads exposed. Yeah, that, that worked better. Okay. Looks pretty good. Now for uh, the things that's going to connect on the outside of the encapsulator. I can get those for you. Okay. So what we do is we take just one of these connector strips and we're going to cut it in half. And you don't have to do this. I always trim off the other end. I'm, I'm just that way. And we're going to bend one up. Bend the other one up. And these are going to go on like this. My hands will stop shaking. And this is actually going to stick through the bottom of the encapsulant. And this is what you're going to solder to after you've got your entire module made. This is what transmits the power out of the cell. You could also do it inside or outside. It doesn't really matter. But it just more depends on uh, how you're going to connect the cells to each other or the modules to each other. Can you give me one more piece of paper, please? Clean this tip off. Take the spacer out. Just have to make sure it's not connected to the... Coming up okay? Yeah, everything looks okay. good. Okay. And that is how... You solder together your solar array parts. So next we're going to go on to uh, encapsulation and talk a little bit about that.